Hey, what's going on, good people? In this video, we're gonna be reacting to the Young Turks talking about right wingers fighting to end no fault divorces. Is marriage equality finally on the way for men? Let's get into it. No fault divorce is very, very bad. But I think the reform to no fault divorce is far simpler. It should be reformed by simply ceasing to exist. Um, marriage is much more than a contract, it's a covenant. There are a lot of problems with the current legal structure of marriage. I agree with that critique of the current legal structure of marriage. No fault divorce is one of the worst things that ever happened to Western civilization. I, I think she's entitled to nothing during these proceedings. And I think the problem is no fault divorce. And I still believe that children need a mom and a dad and that divorce is horrible. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. We gotta get rid of no fault divorce. Well, Tim Pool, you might be getting your wish because there are Republican lawmakers who are literally working on that type of policy as we speak. So um, conservative lawmakers in multiple states and on a national level are considering attempts to eliminate or restrict divorces in cases where fault cannot be proven. Right now, laws ex exist on or in all 50 states that allows people to end a marriage without having to prove that someone in that marriage did something wrong, like cheating or domestic abuse. The socially conservative though, and often religious members of society have a different idea, right? So right wing opponents of such laws are arguing that this deprives men of due process and it hurts families. In reality, oftentimes, Couples that want a divorce don't wanna accuse each other of terrible things. They just wanna part ways and be done with it. And I don't really see how it's beneficial for society to force two individuals who no longer wanna be in a marriage to continue being in a marriage, living under the same roof and being miserable with one another. But nonetheless, many of you have already heard claims from conservatives like Tim Pool who think that it's a bad idea to allow people to have these no fault divorces. And you're about to hear more, let's watch. What we're talking about in the American divorce regime is called no fault divorce. And no fault divorce is one, a contradiction in terms. You can't get it, you can't break a contract if there's no fault of anyone. And two, it's horrific for children and it's horrific for the spouses. Marriage is much more than a contract, it's a covenant. To truly go your own way alone and isolated is to give up on your duty, your legacy, your ancestors, your bloodline, your civilization, your happiness. Marriage is a commitment. That commitment is lifelong. There should actually have to be a really, really, really good reason why you are divorcing. And that's particularly true if you have children, because of course marriage is designed as the fundamental building block of institutional society. It is the place where children are reared. It is the place where you produce children in the first place and children require stability. The traditional response to how you fix marriage is divorce is not allowed. Okay, but uh, there, there's, there's there are rare circumstances where like a guy is threatening to murder and beating his wife and his kids uh, and infidelity is one of these things. No fault divorce is an absolute tragedy. It is the catalyst for every other degenerate marriage and relationship problem that we have in society. She sounds like a good time. Listen, I Okay, great, go ahead and, and pass laws restricting divorce and let's see how much the marriage rate drops from what it already is. It's already dropped considerably, but you're gonna make it harder for people to divorce. You're gonna have more people living under the same roof, having children out of wedlock, which is what conservatives don't want. Like the idea that a couple needs to prove that there's a good reason for them to divorce in order to be able to part ways is ridiculous to me. And this is coming from individuals who purport to wanna to protect freedom in America. But they're getting involved in literally the most intimate personal decisions that Americans can make about their personal lives. It is insane. Now I don't agree with everything that a lot of these conservatives have to say in their views. But I do agree with them about the fact that a woman should not be able to run to the courthouse and divorce her husband over the smallest things. And look, I do believe if a man is putting his hands on that woman, you know, abusing her in any type of way, then yeah, she should file for divorce. That's a real reason to get a divorce. Nowadays, these women are using divorce as a retirement plan. Let's just keep it real. In the case of Steven Crowder, by the way, he was bitter after it was a uh, exposed that he's pretty abusive to his wife. 
And yeah, she wanted a divorce. Who wouldn't want a divorce? And by the way, I just want to make clear, in that case, I wouldn't say that it's a no-fault divorce. <laughs> it seems like there's some evidence indicating that that relationship was not a good one, potentially a very abusive one. And I hope that you know she's able to part ways with him and not have to deal with him ever again. Unfortunately, they have children together, but it is what it is. Now here's Senator J.D. Vance talking about increasing divorce rates back in 2021. And this is one of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace, which is this idea that like, well, okay, these marriages were fundamentally, you know, they were they were maybe even violent, but certainly they were unhappy. And so getting rid of them and making it easier for people to shift spouses like they change their underwear, that's going to make people happier in the long term. And maybe it worked out for the moms and dads, though I'm skeptical, but it really didn't work out for the kids of those marriages. And I think that's what all of us should should be honest about is we've run this experiment in real time and what we have is a lot of very, very real family dysfunction that's making our kids unhappy. There are a lot of myths about the divorce rate in America and it's enraging because it just persists and no one ever really looks into it. So let's talk about what divorce in America really looks like. There was a period of time where divorces experienced a spike. So the divorce rate in the United States increased significantly from 1960 when it was 9.2 per 1,000 married women to 22.6 in 1980. But by 2022, the rate had fallen to 14.5. Now, there's a reason for that. And it's because of the fact that you know people waited longer to get married. I think that has a lot to do with it. So you don't get married when you're super young and you don't even know who you are yet. I think that had something to do with it. But the reason why there was that spike in divorces is because many of those marriages were in fact violent. There was domestic abuse within those marriages. And suddenly you have a situation in which women felt empowered to leave an abusive marriage. So before 1969, when California Republican Governor Ronald Reagan approved the country's first no-fault divorce law, yeah, that Ronald Reagan, he did that, women were often forced to stay in abusive marriages. Between 1976 and 1985, states that passed the, the laws saw their domestic violence rates against men and women fall by about 30%. The number of women murdered by an intimate partner declined by 10% and female suicide rates also declined by 8 to 16%. And this impacted children as well, not in a negative way, in a positive way. Because they're no longer stuck in a household where they have parents engaging in domestic violence, obviously. Kimberly Well, who's a professor at the University of Baltimore School of Law says that without such laws, meaning the ability to have a no fault divorce, it's hard to prove anything in court relating to a family because you don't have any witnesses. It's very difficult to get evidence to show abuse of children. How do you do it? Do you put your kids on the stand? And there were also huge implications for the economic well being of wives, many of whom stayed home and didn't make money on their own. If they could not prove that their husband had been abusive or persuade him to grant a divorce, they would not be able to take any assets from that marriage or remarry. And that's according to a study that was published in the Quarterly Journal of Economics. But some people in the alleged party for personal freedom, which is hilarious to me considering what they're trying to do here, basically want to go back to the dark ages. And they want to go back to an era where no fault divorces were not allowed, where they were banned. Well, we do not want to go back that far. Hell, if we can just go back to the 1950s and 60s where women did not believe in divorce at all. We would love to go back to that particular time when women had a marriage mindset. They understood the family structure and those women didn't even believe in the concept of a divorce. Marriage was for better or worse back in the day. So these men are not trying to go back to no dark ages. Republican lawmakers have discussed increasing restrictions on no fault marriage law, or I'm sorry, no fault marriage laws or eliminating eliminating them entirely in Louisiana, in Oklahoma, Nebraska, Texas. In January, for instance, the Oklahoma State Senator Dusty Devers 
it's, an, I, it's, it's a fun name, I guess. But he's a far right Christian pastor who describes himself as an abortion abs, uh, ab, abolitionist, introduced a bill that would eliminate no fault divorces in his state. Devers wrote last year in a Christian publication that making divorce too easy causes social upheaval, unfettered dishonesty. Uh, let's pause for a second. You wanna talk about unfettered dishonesty? What do you think people do when they're in an unhappy marriage and they can't get out of it? You think they're faithful to one another? You think they're you think they're honest with one another? You don't think they might want to live double lives because they're stuck in an unhappy marriage by force thanks to the state? Let me continue though. Lawlessness, violence toward women, how laughable is this? War on men and expendability of children. To devalue marriage is to devalue the family, is to undermine the foundation of a thriving society. Unfortunately, this guy's not alone. There are others who feel this way. In 2022, the Republican Party of Texas added this language to its platform. We urge the legislature to rescind unilateral no fault divorce laws to support covenant marriage and to pass legislation extending the period of time in which a divorce may occur to six months after the date of filing for divorce. Louisiana Republicans have workshopped a similar proposal and the Nebraska GOP writes on its website that no fault divorce should only be accessible to couples without children. I, I don't understand how Children living in a household with parents who can't stand each other and who do not get along is good for the children. It is not good for the children at all. And if it's abusive, if it's an environment that is full of constant conflict, that's actually incredibly destabilizing for children. I don't understand how anyone can think this is a good idea. Federal lawmakers like J.D. Vance and House Speaker Mike Johnson, as well as former HUD Secretary Ben Carson, have also spoken out in favor of tightening divorce laws. At the Republican National Convention back in 2016, delegates considered adding language declaring children are made to be loved by both natural parents. Uh, united in marriage, legal structures such as no-fault divorce, which divides families and empowers the state, should be replaced by a fault-based divorce. Again, I really do think that the outcome of this, should these types of laws pass on a state level, it's very unlikely to happen on a federal level. But if they do pass on a state level, I would venture to say that marriage rates in those states will experience a dip, a decline. Because if you know that it's gonna be more difficult to divorce your partner, should the marriage end up kind of falling apart, well, maybe you don't wanna take that risk of getting married. And legislation banning no fault divorce is again, unlikely to ever pass on a national level. But if red states manage to enact these bans, couples in those states could be out of luck. Divorce laws generally include a residency requirement, which would make it difficult for people to even cross state lines in order to get a divorce. And luckily so far, none of these efforts have succeeded. Uh, and Denise Lieberman, who's a professor at the University uh, at the at the Washington University School of Law, doesn't think they will, saying, "Quote: I do believe that uh, the train has left the station. I mean, we've had no fault divorce now for 50 years, but I didn't think the Supreme Court would overturn Roe v. Wade, which we had for 50 years. So I suppose we will see." Amen. Anything can change right now, especially when we may have a new president in office soon. And I'm wishing and hoping that they get rid of marriage licenses, period. Yeah, people don't need to be getting married in the first place. We are seeing a major decline in the marriage rate as is, as it should be. A lot of men have realized that marriage is the one contract that they can sign that can possibly ruin their life or change their lives for the better. And guys, coming from a guy who is divorced, that is one contract I will never get myself involved in. And the reason why a lot of these court systems like men in these family courts is because they make millions off child support and alimony payments within that court system. If they want men to come back to the table, they gotta fix marriages. If there's any kids involved, there has to be a mandatory paternity test done 
before and after birth. They got to get rid of alimony, period. And they got to get rid of this no-fault divorce. But that's all I got in this video. You guys drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this no-fault divorce laws that hopefully a lot of these lawmakers actually push through and get done. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.